Okay, we'll start now. Yeah. The interface non-isothermal effect in S factors. Okay, and we have done something similar to this in the interface effectiveness factors, non-isothermal, right? Yeah. What was the definition there? General definition for effectiveness factor, eta. Yeah, eta equal to actual rate. Yeah, by bulk T temperature. Okay, temperature and concentration. temperature and concentration right so this may be rob now this r function of temperature and concentration okay of course clearly we can also write uh, okay here comma b B at bulk temperature and concentration. Good. Okay. So, as usual, we will start single particle and uh, film is there, but it has become nice now. It's not affecting anything. Okay. Yeah, this is C B also equal to C S. This is C S, and from here concentration decreases. Right? Yeah, this is T B also equal to T S. T S, yeah. So, if I take an exothermic reaction, this may be something like this. So, the here T is a function of R and here C is a function of R. This is R, capital R, this is small r, this is 0. Yeah, this is capital R. Good. So, if you look at the definition, you have to get now actual rate, where actual rate is a function of this concentration and this temperature at that point or at this point. For example, if I take at this point, there is a temperature, there is a concentration and also correspondingly there is a temperature. right? So, the rate now depends on, because this also non isothermal, this is also a function of T B and uh, this one R O B is also a function of T, T and C at any point inside the particle. So, what you have to get information is the rate at every point. So, that means, if I know the profile, we can get the rate at every point right? and also I mean, uh, uh, with the temperature and concentration. Now, we have to develop equations, how to do that. Yeah. So, this is a thickness of delta r, thickness of delta r and here I have small r, this one is r plus delta r. Right, and now you just imagine because it is uh, mass transfer. Mass transfer is from outside. Mass transfer is going in this direction. Okay, and it is an exothermic reaction, so heat is coming in the opposite direction. So coordinate system, you have to be careful in the sense that when you are writing uh, conductivity equation, what is conductivity equation? Ah, Fourier. Yeah, yeah. What is the equation 
Q equal to K into dt by dr. Yeah, minus K E D T by dr. Like fixed law. Okay, good. Yeah. So that equation only we are going to use again here. Like D E D effective because D effective is not the diffusivity of a gas gas. Normally we imagine as far as for binary system D effective diffusivity. I am talking because now these two gases are diffusing through the pores. And pores also will have some kind of influence on the molecules, molecular diffusion. Like exactly when you are going through narrow gate in your uh, OAT, okay, you can calculate what is the diffusion coefficient there. When you are going for Saturday movies, okay. So similarly here also, when you have small pores and then large amount of gas is sent there, A and B. So because otherwise A may be going inside, B may be. Forming there and then again coming out binary diffusion. So under these conditions, that is the effective diffusivity because of these pores. And pores are not uniform. Some may be small, some may be larger, some may be lengthier. All that. So everything taken into effect as d e d effective, and that is what what we use in fixed law. Okay, j equal to d e minus d e d c a by d r. Okay, yeah. Similarly here, even the temperature, we do the same thing. We have now effective thermal conductivity. Why? It is not the normal thermal conductivity of the solid. Normal thermal conductivity of the solid is easy to find out. There are no pores, nothing. But this is a catalyst particle with pores. So when the heat is transferred, uh, heat will see some void edge, then some connection with solid, some other void edge, some connection with solid. So I think again it is random. It is not uniform for pores or uniform void edge throughout. So that is why again thermal conductivity has also has lot of work. Separately, people doing only on thermal conductivity in packed beds, thermal conductivity in uh, all other systems. Again, it depends on hydrodynamics and all that. Okay. So that is why Ke, DE are very very important parameters in all heterogeneous systems. Ke is thermal effective thermal conductivity, DE is effective diffusivity. Okay. They are not the normal ones which we usually take, right? Which we usually get from the Tables, and that's why lot of research also has been done on that to give some values. Good. So when I write the mass balance and heat balance, I will give you the finally the differential equations. Okay, that means what is entering here for mass, four pi r square. Tell me quickly. I don't write that. I will just tell you. For mass, first of all, four pi r square. Uh, totally rate. You know what is the mass? Mass that is entering rate. That means moles per time. Four pi r square minus d. That's all. At r equal to r plus delta r, and here at r, and similarly when heat is coming out, you have to take the corresponding symbols again. Four pi r square, Ke into dt by dr. This is now minus this time because it's going towards the this, uh, oh, yeah, along the coordinate. So again at uh, at r and r plus delta r, take all these things, you know, as delta r tending to zero. Then you will get the familiar equations which you already know. For mass transfer, these are the things you would have used many times. These equations, d e d square c by d r square d c by d r, yeah, minus k c to the power of n. If I take nth order reaction, equal to zero, and similarly for heat transfer or energy balance, I have Ke. This is the beauty of uh, transport phenomena. Two by R. Minus. I have delta H R. Into rate of reaction, K C to the power of n equal to zero. Oh, here, here. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, little bit here. Very good. That's why always, you know, fresh, fresh classes are very important because you will be fresh. You will catch mistakes. Otherwise, I think after two classes gone, going to sleeping mode. Okay, good. This is heat of reaction. Yeah, 
So, now these are the two equations which we have to I mean we have to solve both are second order differential equations then you need four boundary conditions. What are the boundary conditions here? d c by d r equal to 0 at r equal to 0 yeah this is 1 yeah and c equal to c b which is also equal to c s okay at r equal to capital R. Similarly, d t by d r equal to 0 at r equal to 0 and t equal to t b at r equal to capital R. Good. So, I think this is equation 3, this is equation 4. Good. Yeah. Can you solve that equation first? Concentration, concentration equation. Is it easy to solve? Ah, uh, for n equal to 1, you, you can solve. Okay. And the, the this one, second equation from their concentration. We can write in terms of R uh, in second. Uh, second? Second, first equation, first equation, first equation. C. 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 First, equation. first equation, you can solve for C. Huh? Ah, you cannot solve any one of them independently. So you 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 need some link in between. Okay, yeah, correct. No, because this is here. I have that's why I told you. No, this Aryanis fellow I hidden somewhere. Okay, if you don't notice, that fellow will kill you, right? So this k is nothing but k zero e power minus e by r t. Yeah. So that is there. So that's why you cannot solve both of them. So you have to solve them simultaneously, right? So now again observe that two equations. Can you link them? What is the linking factor there? K c to the power of n. So if I if I solve from this equation k to the power of n or rate, this is nothing but rate. Okay. Yeah. Then, if I can substitute here, then I have a relationship between temperature and concentration. concentration. Okay. So, that relationship you will get if you write this uh, in terms of this also can be written in the short form, no? In uh, in this form, like one by r square. Yeah, remember one by r square short form this is expansion form d by dr of d e by d c by d r okay that form only yeah so this form equal to that and uh, if i also substitute here okay this form this will be delta h r all this correct I am just substituting that form here and I have this equation this is equal to again 1 by r square d by d t no d r sorry k e d t by d r correct no by r square. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. K e r square, right, right. Mm. Yeah. So, this is the another equation now. Okay. Using these two, uh, this equation, this is now 5, 6. Can you tell me the relation between concentration and uh, twice you have to integrate that and then you will get the relationship between yeah someone did already 
It's very simple. Hmm. Yeah, Andra? You do whatever you want to tell me between what is T and C relationship. You know, it's not like management, no, you do. What you are telling is it can be solved, sir, by taking some constant and all that. What I am asking you, you solve. Yeah, telling to solve is difficult. I mean, that is only my job huh? to tell that, you know, you solve. I need not even know. And you can always take that, uh, I mean, that assumption you have to do, otherwise, you cannot solve. Diffusivity and uh, thermal conductivity are independent of temperature and concentration also. Okay. Uh, diffusivity sometimes can depend on those are the questions you have to ask me. You know, sir, how can we solve, sir, unless you tell this? Sir. Okay. Huh? Good. I will leave it to you. So, if you solve that, what you get is T minus T s equal to uh, minus delta H r d e by k e into C b minus C s. Okay, I mean there will, you may have some confusion with uh, signs and all that that you can always get it when you actually solve. Okay, good. You try later. You got it, huh? Rajit? Uh, you will get it. The first day, uh, the differentiation and also you have to use the boundary conditions, same boundary conditions, and then you will get this equation. And this gives me wonderful relationship between concentration and temperature. So, what I do now is, you go to this equation. K I have here, this K fellow has this arrhenius, this T. So, this T I am going to substitute there, here, here. right. K, K has T and that T is substituted from this equation. Anyway, yeah, C B and C S at any point uh, Okay. Ah, this is evaluated at any point. No, this is C. C B equal to C S, right? Okay. Yeah. Good. So that is the one. And you solve that those two equations. Okay. So now we have equation one, two, and seven with the boundary conditions you have to solve the concentration profile, temperature profile and then integrate for the average rate, correct no? Average rate, that is the actual rate you will get and then um, of course, you have that as actual rate, that divided by bulk rate will give you a fitness factor. We do not have a solution for that. So, only people have given the results in terms of yeah, empirical correlations. Okay? So, one more step before going to that empirical, I mean that graph is this, this also can be written if I divide by, okay, sorry, yeah, T b, we are using consistently T b, T b equal to T s. Okay. Yeah. So, this is the equation. Now, if I can uh, solve also this T minus T b minus 1 equal to minus delta H r d e, I also have uh, C b k e T b into 1 minus C by C b. This is another equation, equation 8. where this also can be written as T by T s, uh -huh, T, T b, always the same writing, 
equal to 1 plus beta C B, this is equation 9, where beta equal to minus delta H R, all this D E, C B, K E, T B R. Anything missing there? K E, T B R, ah, ah, correct, yeah. You see, like your beta bar, here also we have beta, good, yeah. And again, this nice equation simply relates temperature and concentration. We can also find out what is the maximum temperature that is possible here, where C equal to 0, okay? C equal to 0, then you will have, yeah, when this is 0, you will have, uh, yeah, T by T B equal to 1 plus beta, okay? So, that is what is the maximum uh, delta, ah, of course, if you bring this, this side, then you will have the maximum thing, I think that I am not doing that, okay? I just leave it to you, your imagination, but now I think I can also ask you, what is the maximum temperature, that is why you have to make a note and then find out, okay. Delta max, everything I have to write, I say, it becomes the LKG all the time, okay, good. So, now, we will use this information and try to plot, because we have to finally, say what is the effectiveness factor and how many parameters I have here, what are the basic things which we have to plot, we have to plot phi versus phi versus eta only, right. Yeah. Eta versus phi. What are the parameters now? From this thing, what will be the parameters? Dimensionless. You know already one there. Beta. 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 Another one? Because Arianis fellow is there. Huh? Epsilon. Epsilon. Arianis is a number. So, these two. Arianis is a number is one parameter and beta is another parameter. Okay. So, now let us plot this for gamma, gamma is the, no, no, not gamma, why epsilon, we are calling epsilon, no? epsilon equal to E by R T B, okay. epsilon equal to E by R T B and of course, beta we will try to plot there. So, I can start here from point 1. Okay, 1, 10, uh -huh. 10, 100. Okay. So, this side I may have point 1, 1, 10, 100. So, okay, approximately, yeah, I could do that. Okay, so uh, beta equal to zero means where is beta? Ah, uh, here. Beta equal to zero means isothermal. Okay, that means delta H R equal to zero. Yeah are very, very, very small approximately 0, delta, delta H R. Okay. So, that we will plot first, that is nothing but isothermal, right? beta equal to 0, which you are already familiar with, with isothermal. So, you may get 0 0.1, right? Yeah. something like this. And first simple things, beta negative, beta negative means again, you know, endothermic beta negative is endothermic. So, I may have this may be point minus point 0.2 like this, right. So, this is 
beta equal to 0 equal to 0 0.2 minus a minus 0.2 this is um, okay minus 0.4 minus 0.6 good so now the exciting things exciting things are beta positive that is 0.2 oh yeah they won't cross anyway so this is this is beta okay anyway let me write again beta equal to 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 okay the top one is slightly awkward i think it has to go till top and then slightly come down Okay, anyway, just analytically the to show the trend. Good. So, what can we predict? Yeah, this is uh, 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 this particular thing is for 20. So, if you if if you draw these curves for 10, you will have slightly different. Okay. Straightforward things first. Endothermic reaction always you have less than one endothermic, and of course, beta equal to zero is isothermal. We know we already we know how to draw that and as the beta is increasing then you will have even more than 1 more than 10 more than 100 effectiveness factors so what is the meaning that means this rate is even 100 times more than the bulk rate yeah any explanation we know it's possible but any explanation high temperature Increases with temperature. Yeah, heat of reaction uh, because of exothermicity, the temperature may increase there, but you should have a combination of why it is going to 100 and all that, right combination of temperature as well as concentration. If you do not have concentration again, even though if I have temperature, there is no use, right? Sufficient concentration that may be happening somewhere down because temperatures may be high, but here you have mass transfer resistance 5, five large. Phi large means mass transfer resistance, right? Yeah. So that's why you may not have, and then that may be falling there. Good. Yeah. So the things what you have to identify here is there is a maximum for these cars when you go for exothermic, and where you have to be really careful because these peaks may destroy your uh, yeah catalyst because thermal centering may come into picture, okay? Or the particle itself may break. Right, all these things, the, the thermal integration, okay, of the particles may not be there, so it may break. So all these things may happen. So that's why we should have an idea of this temperature as well as the uh, concentrations. Concentration, no problem. Particularly temperatures, we should have an idea, and that will come automatically when you are solving this, this, this to get the actual rates. Good. Yeah. Another striking thing here is that uh, at some uh, Phi values, huh? Sir, at that particular phi value, is it possible to have three? Yeah, that is what is the exciting thing there. That is what is the beauty there. And lot of papers are there on that particular aspect alone. How this multiplicity, what we call, okay, are unstable steady states, unstable temperatures, or stable temperatures, multiplicity in temperatures. So, all these general words are used for this phenomena and then they found that surprisingly it is very very narrow region where under those phi's you only you will get this kind of behavior. That means, particle will be operating at three temperatures at a particular phi like 
CSTR, we have done the last semester. Okay. A CSTR under certain conditions, you will have three temperatures. One will be unstable, the remaining two will be stable. Even here, it is exactly the same thing. This is stable temperature. What do you mean by stable temperature? What we have done here is just nothing but solving heat removal and heat generation. It is the balance between heat removal and heat generation. Okay. So, whenever you have both are equal, then you will have only one point. Right? Yeah. So, under these conditions, here I have one point like that and when I am slightly coming in this direction and then suddenly here, suddenly it may fall to this or from there suddenly it may fall to this. That is not a problem, but problem is if I am operating on this at this point, if there is any slight change in the temperatures due to many conditions, even mass transfer conditions also will change the rate. So, that rate change uh, rate will change automatically the temperature, because rate is directly connected with the exothermicity of the reaction. So, any kind of uh, instabilities in the parameters will either go from here to here or here to here. Okay. So, this point is the reaction snuffed out, extension of the reaction almost. That means, you are coming from 100 to almost 1 or 2 here, when you are coming in this direction or when you are going from this direction, then you have from here to here suddenly jumping to very high temperatures. I mean, effectiveness factors, but that is due to only high temperatures and all this is possible for beta equal to large values. Just look at beta and then find out, is there really something wrong with that beta? What is the meaning of beta large there? Delta H r must be large, very good. Ah. K is low. So, what is the meaning of that K is low? Delta H r is large, K is low means it is a very bad combination. Yeah, it is always like heart attack and sugar, diabetic and heart attack together. Okay, it is a deadly combination. So, you have large amount of heat in the particle, but it is not able to conduct out. If it is able to dissipate it out, no problem it will quickly come to one of those steady state conditions. Okay? That is the reason why we have and I think no, no book has given nice explanation except Aris book. Aris goes into very, very deep into these concepts as well as mathematics both. So, he says that this curve is possible only when I have a catalyst with, uh, you know the problem is when you are tracking one uh, particular curve. Okay? the parameters are related, right? you can see the phi also contains k, correct no? phi contains k and also here, uh, yeah, here I have k e, d e, here also I have e, all these parameters of course, of course, t b will not change, e will not change, this is not a problem, but there is a beta keeping beta alone constant and varying phi is not easy, why d e is there in phi you have d you know, in beta also you have d right. So, that is why, uh, that is why what he says is imagine a situation where catalyst particle with uh, deactivation, deactivation simply reduces the temperature without affecting all other things, okay? I mean rate of reaction. It is getting simply deactivated because some active sites are not uh, slowly getting blocked but keeping the particle integrity as it is, so diffusivity must be same. So, under those conditions, when you are moving from this to this, initially you have low effectiveness factors. Why? Because mass transfer is, yeah, again wake him up. Uh, yeah, I think you are very much interested in the subject. Uh, that is why I think for you, it is like a song. Okay? And the moment you come to the class, I am going to my matrix close over. Okay? Yeah, that can happen with a beautiful song, like others, uh, you know, mothers did. Good. So when you have at uh, at this point, at this point here, then I have low effectiveness factors, almost one or two, right? That is because of high effectiveness factor. Uh, sorry, high kilo modulus. And then you are moving in this direction because, yeah. Anyway, when you are moving in this direction towards reaction control regime, this is mass transfer regime, control regime and this is 
reaction control regime. We are moving to that side, so that means the rate of reaction must increase because more and more mass transfer coming, right? Here less mass transfer, here the, when you move this side more mass transfer. So slowly you are coming like this and this is increasing and at this point suddenly either it may fall suddenly here, okay? So that means the reaction which is going on till here suddenly snuffed out. I think that is the term he uses. Our reaction got extincted, extinction of reaction. And the other side, it seems that is not easy to, to imagine, but if you are able to imagine that, that means moving this side, that means from reaction regime to mass transfer controlling regime. Okay? When you are moving in this direction, after some small changes in phi, suddenly you may yeah, jump from this to this, which he calls as ignition point, ignition point. Okay. Good. Yeah. This is very nice because whenever you have, uh, see always whenever you have increasing and decreasing trend, there is no thrill, there is no kick. If you plot x versus y, maybe it is increasing and in other case it is decreasing. It's always increasing, decreasing, no kick, but kicks will come whenever you have it reaches maximum and falls okay? or when it reaches minimum and again increases suddenly. So, then there is some phenomena which is changing its gear somewhere due to some reasons and then you have to find out those reasons. So, that is why as research scholars you should be looking for those kicks instead of asking for smooth variations like x is increasing, y is increasing. Okay? X, x should increase uh, and y should increase the way you never expected. That is why we have a journal called AACHE journal. Okay. Then you have of course, general of fluid mechanics and all that. If you have normal way x versus y when you plot, when it is going smoothly up, they will never publish the paper. Okay. So, they publish happily those papers when you have a graph, this is y, this is x. So, it goes like this, goes like this, goes like this, goes like this, no goes like this. Very good, A C H E paper, because you do not know what is happening here. <laughs> okay. So, this goes so suddenly sometime what, what happens it comes back again goes forward and again goes down goes up. So, this kind of complicated phenomena if you are able to explain reasonably. So, these are the complications. So, that is why you are getting this kind of behavior immediately acceptance letter will come your paper has been accepted because no one could understood. Okay, so, that is why I think we are publishing leave it good. So, that is the kind of thick, uh, kicks you have to really uh, see for when you are doing your PhD. Okay? So, that is why observe, do not try to have only smooth curves and uh, straight lines. Smooth curves and straight lines nothing will happen. Okay? No kicks will be there. Good. So, this is about non isothermal effectiveness factor and, uh, and what you have learnt here is how to of course, there are many things, there, there is a criteria where this particular zone can be avoided, there are equations available. Okay, depending on beta and epsilon. If you know beta and epsilon, because many books use the gamma, gamma as minus e by rt. So, if you know beta and epsilon and calculating using these two, there are some criteria like weiss prater criteria, right, where they have found that to avoid this, what should be the value of beta and epsilon or combination of beta and epsilon. Okay nice information. So, that you do not have to operate here, operate somewhere here which is more stable and better. Okay. Highest you are getting. So, temperature, uh, I mean uh, the uh, effectiveness factors are very high, catalyst particle is very, very active. So, you operate under those conditions and your reactor volume will be automatically very, very small reactor volume, because rate, rate of reaction is very high. Always in the design, V by F naught equal to d x by minus r a the down in the denominator. So, that is what is the chemical engineer's dream. How do I increase my r a at the bottom? So, that I will get maximum yeah minimum volume for given conversion or maximum conversion for a given volume. Okay? So, that is the criteria excellent good. 
So, the next one which I would like to do is the combination of internal and yeah, interface and interface, combination of internal and external effectiveness factors. Okay? So, that we will do. Good, I think you have I enjoyed always, but you know, I do not know whether you enjoyed or not. Okay? Yeah, I mean, now you are enjoying anyway. Okay? <laughs> Uh, you are in, always in your wonder world. What is that? Who is that uh, girl name? Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's why I think you always enjoy. Uh, Alice uh, enjoys her wonder world. In Germany, you know, German professors, they will have uh, this board, one part and another part, another board. So you know, when professor completes first time, of course, till that point. So when he is writing here his student will come and then wipe it out this side. Okay? Yeah. And when again he comes here and then goes that side and he fills up, so like that. And their classes are one and a half hours classes. Most of the classes. Okay? So I mean German professors are German professors. Really fantastic. Okay. So this is inter and So, we have now its combinations. No? Now, we are talking about inter and interface isothermal effectiveness factor. And we also have combination of inter and uh, interface non isothermal effectiveness factor that we are not touching uh, right now. Otherwise, you know, earlier we used to have one course separately on catalytic reactions, only on catalytic reactions. So, that is why we used to do all that there. I used to do when we had a stream in M Tech where uh, you know a chemical reaction engineering stream, I think that is 87, 88, 90 that time some uh, 10 years or so it was there. At that time, we had 5 courses in reaction engineering. That uh, non catalytic reaction also was a separate course. Reactor theory was common for everyone. And there was also uh, a course called uh, chemical reactor design for process plants. Only design, reactor design, very thorough. But problem was you know operating problems. We did not have sufficient students, not reaction engineering. Reaction engineering transport phenomena, uh, transport phenomena is another, uh, another uh, stream. So, these two always uh, and process control, these two always used to have. There were other things like uh, environment engineering, biochemical engineering, polymer engineering. So, always those three were empty, that means only one or two. So, then we thought at one point of time, let us merge all M tech so that they would not learn anything. So, so, we combined master of all, jacks of none. So, I think that is what, what we did. So, inter and interface isothermal. effectiveness factor. Yeah. So, yeah. first one I think as usual, we will start with the diagram. These diagrams are very good I say. Yeah. Good. I have become expert in drawing uh, particles on the, <laughs> on the board and this film also, you never see this kind of film anywhere in reality. Okay. So, this is the one. In fact, this is a very ha very good habit of drawing the profiles for whatever problem you take. Okay. So, this is uh, r equal to 0, capital R, small r equal to 0, this is r. Good. So, in the film, now we have to show the profiles. This is C B, C S and C. Good. Yeah. And this side, if I have a exothermic reaction T B, T S, And you may have like this. This is T as not linear. The shape also exactly we do not know. Yeah, this is uh, this is T S. Good. Isothermal. 
No, I'm just plotting the whole uh, thing there. Okay. Yeah. You are right. Here we are, you can always assume that T B equal to T S equal to T. Right. I mean, this the whole thing. These are the profiles. What we are taking now. That's right. You are correct. Isothermal only we are talking right now. Good. Yeah. So when you are talking about isothermal, uh, this is a general profile. It's not that I am now solving this problem using these profiles. Only these things. Good. Okay. So we already have an equation for. Uh, I think I'll write here. So we have R O B equal to yeah. And the steady state conditions, this mass transfer through the film must be equal to diffusion at the surface, right? That's what how you have done for interface effectiveness factor. So then uh, you have kGa, kGa, Cb minus Cs. Here I have eta bar k. No, not eta bar, eta. This is logical for me, right? So this data, uh, this eta, you know already that is uh, internal uh, interface effectiveness factor. So this is the intrinsic rate that multiplied by this will give me the rate on the surface. Okay. Now film is coming into picture. Now that film is because of this gradient, C B minus C S, right? So what is the procedure? Eliminating C S. And finding out what is R O B. This is R S, where the rate is based on the all the surface area, of course. Right? Yeah, external surface area only. But this eta will take care of those gradient inside this one. I don't know whether you have understood this or not. Okay? Eta, when I multiply, okay, if eta equal to one, then it will be. Straightly, there is no effect of intraface mass transfer, no resistance. So like that. So because when eta equal to 0.5, for example, you may have this kind of profile. So that will take care of that. So then we have uh, this is equation one. Yeah, solving this, we will get these two. Cs equal to or Cs by C B equal to I have one by one plus eta k by k g a. Please check this. This is step two. Quickly try, or it is common sense. Correct? Huh? Good. So then I have R O B equal to C O C B divided by One by kg a plus one by eta k. Okay. Yeah. So this equation three, we will try to arrange this in terms of an observable. Okay. Yeah. How do we do do that? This is R O B L square. That means I am dividing this by L square and dividing by D E C B. Okay. Or otherwise, of course, I can bring that C B this side. Okay, this side L square by D E and C B also. Okay, let me. And uh, the same thing we also do here. If we substitute that. Then I will have L square D E one by K G A. Just it is a manipulation. That's all. Nothing new. No equation is new, and only mathematical jugglery here and there to get some beautiful information. So one by eta K. Oh no. One by eta k, correct? Yeah. So now this equation can also be written in terms of R O B. That is an observable. This is an observable D E C B, which is which can be written as k 
L square by D E, again manipulation there, K by K G A, plus 1 by eta. Okay? And uh, this I know already, K L square by D E, what is that? Phi square. Okay? So, that is the one. Now, this particular part, I have to also just manipulate. Okay. D E C B, this will be phi square divided by I have here again k l square by d e, here alone I am doing that again k l square by d e and I can also arrange that k g a l square by d e plus 1 by eta just again I have divided by L square by D e, L square by D e, but remember, oh no here, remember K G A, what is K G A? A. Yeah, so what is that? A specific surface area per unit volume. Yesterday we have seen V by S, S x is what? R by Yeah, so that is also a characteristic dimension for us. So, that is why that L and this L can be cancelled. So, now I have k l by d e, k, k g, k g a l by d e, what is that uh, number? Sherwood number will come only when I have single phase. Okay. Yeah, this is biot number. Biot number, biot number will come when you have more than one phase. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's why we can write this this one again phi square by phi square by biot number plus one by eta. Okay, good. Now eta, let us say for slab. What is eta for slab? Tan is phi by phi. Okay, you can substitute that and then try to simplify that. What do you get? For slab, for slab, eta equal to tan h phi by phi. Did you get this? R O B L square by D E C B equal to phi tan h phi divided by phi tan h phi by biot number plus 1. Is this uh, numbers gone total here? Yeah? So, this is 4 5 6 7. Could you get that Renita? Substituting tan h phi by phi, 1 by eta. So, phi will go up and then you get something cancelled and you will end up with that equation. Okay? Good, that is nice. Everything is nice. Okay. So, this is, do you remember this is eta R O B L square D E by C B, only 24 hours gone I say, ah, eta phi square only yesterday only we have discussed about that, that is eta phi square. So, eta phi square equal to this observable equal to this. Okay? And uh, when you plot this, this is what, what you get. Okay? This is eta phi square, which is nothing but your observable. This is eta, this is again uh, isothermal, so maximum is 1, this side you will have 0 0.1 100, somewhere here 10, somewhere here 1, 1, 10. So, when I plot, now beta is the parameter, not beta, what is that, 
biot number. Biot number is the parameter. So, then you will have Okay, that is fine. So, this is biot number equal to biot number mass, you know heat also has biot number, heat biot number also is there. So, that is why we put this one as for mass. So, this is equal to 1000, this is equal to 100, this is equal to 10, this equal to Excellent, yeah. Oh, timer. Oh, yeah. Take, send it back. Sufficient, huh? Send back. Yeah, you have either you draw that quickly. Drawing is very good because you will have one more experience, you know, by drawing it. That is why I did not give this first. And how do you use this? Eta phi square is observable. Our idea is to find out the overall effectiveness factor. Okay, I measure the rate. I know the dimension. I know DE correlations and CB. So now I will go here, read, and then get the corresponding overall effectiveness factor. Okay. So for that, if both are controlling, so this is the one what we have to learn and this is very simple now because I do not have to explain that much. And yeah, one more thing what we have to observe is that you know 100 and 1000 almost there is not much any difference. So, what do you conclude? Mass transfer? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Controlling. Controlling, yeah, when it is all together? Reaction. The reaction controlling, mass transfer is not controlling. So, that is why when you design a particle, you have this information on uh, mass transfer coefficient and all that diffusivity. You calculate biot number. Once you calculate biot number, if it is 1000, 500 like that, then you say external mass transfer is not coming into picture at all. So, then you concentrate on internal interface effectiveness factors. You know how nicely one can do. KGA is known, I have correlations. DE is known, I have correlations. But you have to find out at what temperature, pressure and all conditions and then calculate what is biot number. If biot number is generally 500 and 1000, safely ignore external mass transfer. Okay, Good, I think when uh, Narasimharadi was telling this is Sherwood number, Sherwood number will not give you that kind of information. This is only within one phase Sherwood number. So, here biot number will give me it is between two phases. Okay, Diffusivity is inside and kg is within the particle, I mean uh, in the film. Yeah surrounding the particle the film. So, it combines those two film and then interface. So, that is the reason why biot number is more useful for heterogeneous systems and Sherwood number and all that is normally for single fluids that is you have all the correlations. Okay? And of course, there is no way you can also call this one as a Sherwood number 2, but you should know what is the diffusivity coefficient and what is the mass transfer coefficient. The Sherwood number what does that give you? Narasimharadi? Sherwood number, what is the information you will get from there? Kg divided by what is that D? Which diffusivity? Mass diffusivity, it is within the same phase binary diffusivity. So, that will give you a ratio of convective transport by all that within the phase, whereas here between the phases. So, that is the difference between this and that. Okay? Good, huh? yeah. And the moment you cross the door, cross the door anyway, you won't, you will not remember anything. Okay, but anyway, examination is coming.